Across Newcastle and the Hunter, two in URFM 103.7. Tom, have a look at some of the things happening in the world of education and uh, our Professor of Education from the University of Newcastle, uh, John Fischetti. John, as always, a, a pleasure to, to uh, find you with us, of course. And this time around, we're having a look at um, not so much education, but some of the uh, the things that are actually post-education. So once you've gone through, if you've done the university thing, you end up with the hex debt and um, a lot of chatter in that space at the moment. Good morning. Good morning, Mark. Yeah, it actually is uh, related to the early years as well, because a lot of young people in years 10, 11, and 12 are being discouraged by the potential of the debt that they'll accumulate. The rise in interest rates has affected everyone. All of our lit- listeners are under the pump with whether it's a car loan, a mortgage, or just the cost of living has gone up so much. So people are being much more prudent in their decisions about how much debt do you want to accumulate. And for the last few years, with almost 0% interest, the hex debt was a nuisance, but it was probably manageable. And if you got a good job as a result, you could figure it out. But now we have graduates in high-paying careers actually suffering, and those getting ones that are in more of the social service and helping professions really worried about paying it back. So we actually have year 11 and 12 students changing their minds on what they might do because their families don't want them to accumulate the debt that comes and then the interest on on top of that. And, and look, it is a part of it. I mean, you have to factor that in. Well, I'm going to do this particular type of work. Um, I better like it because I'm going to be saddled with this uh, debt for a while while I uh, while I pay that down once you get to a certain point. But um, what what does that actually look like, John? And what, what are some of the, the, the changes that have kind of been knocked on the head? Yes, yeah, so there's a couple of really good things to we'll get to in a second that'll be optimistic ways forward, but it's looking like about a 7% interest rate, which is now being tacked on, and 7% more to the amount of your loan. So if you borrowed $100,000 to go to uni for your degree, you're going to be another 7000 in debt. And that aspect of it is, particularly for working people, pretty debilitating. And the postgrad level, with the degrees being more expensive, you could see it being even higher. So the ways around that, Mark, I think are really important for our listeners to take on board. First of all, education investment, not a cost. It does pay itself back in the quality of life, the job you get, and the next one after that. Particularly in our automated society, if you're at the lower level of the food chain, a machine will take your job if it hasn't already, and if you're not equipped to be the one that fixes that machine, you're probably (laughs) not gonna have a job. But what we can do is start to look at partnerships across between secondary schools, TAFE, and universities. TAFE right now in Australia is free. And so if you do an advanced diploma, for example, in hospitality, and you're interested in that area in the food service areas or in the in the, the uh, working on a cruise ship or running your own restaurant or being in one of the event planning modes, think of all the events in the Hunter in the last few months, there's people behind the scenes planning all of that. Those are good paying jobs beyond the advanced diploma. So you might want to think about doing the advanced diploma, then taking those credits. One third of your degree then is free because we have articulation agreements with TAFE that allow that to be bridged. So then if you're really still thinking you're going to be stuck, there's a number of scholarships you can apply for that could help you fund your way through so you wouldn't have to work as much or accumulate debt by borrowing uh, to be able to go further along in your education. So students need to just be more savvy and take advantage of bridging the gap between where there are some resources, and that would be in TAFE, and use those credits and bring them in. And many of our programs in nursing, education, business, as just examples, engineering, they have equivalents in TAFE that if you took them there, we count the credits, you bridge the gap, and then you're not accumulating the debt. And maybe we've solved the problem because we've just started to operate like an educational system. So it, it sounds like that there are a, a lot of ways to sort of not well, yeah, get around the fact that you will have this this cost there. And like I said, if you can cut up any cost by a third, that that's got to be worth looking at. Uh, are more and more students looking at these sort of avenues, John, as cost of living becomes more of a thing for everybody? Just being out in the local schools lately and to several of our wonderful partners all around our region, I think the answer is no, that it isn't really clear on the streets that mm. TAFE is free. I bet if we polled our listeners, most wouldn't know that. You can get certificates and diplomas, advanced diplomas now as a citizen for free. They don't know the bridging of those courses and the counting of, of that prior learning. And if you work out a plan with some stair steps, maybe you only need that certificate now, but you know that those credits will go into an advanced diploma and that advanced diploma is articulated in the, into the university. You can have a five or six year plan, which c- it could be affordable. 
On the other side of that, the economy will change again. Maybe interest rates will get better and flatten out. But for the next couple of years, I'd hate to think people are putting a lid on their expectations mm -hmm. for their future only because of finances. we got to get past that because right now, Australia needs the keenest workers at the highest possible skill level. It's going to be people coming from overseas who will take those jobs. Why don't we not prevent ourselves from dreaming and continuing with our own education? And at the end of the day, even if the you know costs become a little bit more affordable down the road, if you're still cutting a third off somewhere, absolutely, you know, a third less of something is still better than paying it. And you could end up on the cruise ship. I'd love to be working on a cruise ship, but unfortunately, get the seasickness, John. That's <laughs> never going to happen. Well, you'll only have to come on dock and do it on dock, I guess, <laughs> and be in a much. dry area. But I think the answer is to keep hope alive. Make sure you're working towards your education. Work on finding ways to get credit for what you've already done, and make sure you're trying to work in the field that you're trying to study so that you're bridging that work and academic kind of lifespan. So you're not in a job you don't like. You could be in a job that's actually in the discipline you're studying while you're in your degree. A few different ways to think of it there, John. It's always a pleasure. We'll catch up with you next time around. Thanks, Mark. Our Professor of Education from the University of Newcastle, John Fischetti, on a few ways to slice and dice your hex down to 2 in URFM 103.7. A broadcast service of the University of Newcastle.